Hi everybody, Veronica Rose here. Um, I hope you're all keeping well. It's been a while since I posted a video on uh, CISA. But today I saw a, a comment on my YouTube channel. Uh, by the way, you're most welcome to the Viral Knowledge channel. And the main purpose of this channel is to ensure that knowledge goes viral. So feel free to subscribe to this uh, video so that um, the algorithm can help me reach other people to also view and learn together. The main purpose of this channel is to ensure that knowledge goes viral. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> subscribe. Okay, so I'm using several screens. My eyes may not be in the center, um, but I'll try to ensure that my eyes are are just uh, on the screen. So the question I found on the channel, uh, somebody was asking that uh, they have completed their CISA exam. Do they really need to apply for certification? Um, technically, I think uh, he was trying to find out whether is applying for certification mandatory. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would like you to look at it in two scenarios. Huh? Um, when you complete your CISA exam, you will need to um, verify or to demonstrate that you are credible and you qualify to be CISA certified. And what am I trying to say? So when you pass the exam, um, you pay an amount of, uh, I think, $50 to apply for certification. That is certification processing fee. And then you submit the application to demonstrate that you really meet the experience requirements. And you also adhere to the Code of Professional Ethics. But just in case you completed the exam, let's say you're just straight out of school and you've done the CISA exam and passed, luckily. That means you need five years of experience for you to be able to certify. That means between the time you do the exam up to five years later, you can still apply for certification after those five years of experience. So the other scenario is um, if you complete past the exam today, and uh, let's say you have a bachelor's degree in an IT related field or in any of the CISA domains, you'll find that you'll have a waiver on the experience required. And then you'll have now to work uh, in the remaining years for you to fulfill that you qualify for you to get certified. So to answer his question, uh, that do, does he really need to get certified? I'll give an example. Assuming you went to purchase a car, whichever mode of your preference. You make the payment, you drive off with the car, um, you own, you just drive this car, enjoy your car and everything. And then um, at the time of buying, you didn't do the transfer. Um, you didn't get the logbook or you didn't get a sales agreement for this car. Uh, how can you claim that you're the ultimate owner of this car? Um, the other scenario to look at it is this way. Uh, if if you've been uh, following most jobs, especially in any IT, GRC domains, the, part of the mandatory requirements is that you must have a CISA certification or a certification in that related field. So how can you convince a hiring manager or an HR that you are qualified to perform that task or you're qualified for the role, but you don't have the certification. But then you start telling the, um, the potential employer that um, I finished my exam some time back, but I, I don't have the certification. Okay, how can you convince them? It's tricky, right? So, and uh, I'm not saying that without a certification, you cannot perform tasks, not at all. I've seen so many people who have hands-on IT audit um, experience, who have hands-on um, skills in any other GRC domain that are indeed qualified to say that they perform these particular tasks and their work can speak for them. But without a certification at the end of the day, how can you prove credibility? 
So here is not to say that um, if you don't have a certification, you're not credible, but how do you, how do you, um, how can you convince any hiring manager, any person out there, um, going back to the scenario of the car, how can you convince somebody that you're the ultimate owner of the property, or let's say a phone, you bought a phone, with, it, it's not in your names, um, a car or anything you own, but you don't have a certification. So, or a receipt or an agreement or a logbook to you to confirm that you are the ultimate owner. So that's where I'm coming from. And uh, so to answer your question, yes, please go and apply for certification, apply for it. Apply for certification, uh, get certified and uh, be the best auditor you can be. And I wish you the best. Bye-bye.